He and Cleo wove the next pair, and Mises had two more weapons ready. Again they wove the spells, and again, and again. His head throbbed, the ache growing worse as he depleted his magic, but he focused on the shining blades Mises kept handing him until he'd lost count. Finally, he handed off a heavy sword, and there were no more weapons waiting. Exhaustion buzzed along his nerves, and he slumped back against a wall, breathing hard. Mises caught his elbow and eased him down. He realized Cleo was already sitting in the mud, her face haggard and pale. Rest for a minute, Mises told them, before turning to his men and launching into a strategy discussion. Closing his eyes, he slipped a hand into his pocket and dug his fingers into his pouch of diamond lodestones. But only one had any reserves left. He drained the others during his spellcrafting efforts over the last few days. Damn, that had been short-sighted. Since it was all he had, he drew on the power in the lodestone. Hot magic flooded his aching body and he breathed easier. Are you okay? he asked Cleo. She didn't look as tired as he felt, but nymphs had larger magic reserves than Incubi did. And she hadn't spent several days weaving non-stop like an idiot. I'm fine. She glanced at the griffins. Will this be enough? It'll have to be. As his men formed into squads, Mysis stepped away from them and glanced over Lyre. Where do you plan to wait? Wait, he repeated as he climbed to his feet. I'm not, you're not coming with us, the prince said, his commanding tone brooking no argument. You're exhausted and your leg gave out in that last fight. You're a liability in close combat. Liar bit back a curse, unable to deny it. I still have my bow. In this weather? Mysis considered it, then nodded. Jasper will take you up onto a rooftop. Stay there and make sure you don't hit any of my men. That was probably all Liar was good for right now anyway. Cleo, I'm going with Mysis, she said before either he or the prince could say anything different. If Bastion has any more nasty surprises in store, they might need my help. His throat tightened. Too dangerous. She was good with magic and she handled herself well in a fight, but she wasn't trained for this kind of combat. He pulled his spell chain off his neck and lowered it over her head. Her eyes widened as his defensive weaving settled around her. You need it more than I do, he said hoarsely. Be careful. She nodded, her eyes bright and shimmering. You too. He could say nothing more, not with a bunch of flinty-eyed warriors watching them. So he let Mysis pass him off to another griffin. The heavily muscled soldier drew Lyre down the alley and he glanced back one more time as Cleo took a position on Mysis' right flank. Pushing his fear for her out of his mind, he focused on what was coming. The battle that would decide Aldrendahar's fate.